What is going on guys? So today we are going to talk about the healing meta in PVP. This is something we have actually talked about here recently when Zenimax implemented the hybrid scaling for all abilities. So what exactly is hybrid scaling? In short, what it does is it allows for stamina builds to use magic or heals like rapid regeneration or blessing of restoration, or even using class heals like budding seeds on the warden, resilient flesh on the necromancer or healthy offering on the nightblade. While also it allows for magic builds to use stamina costing skills like vigor and rally. Just from that statement alone, a lot of you can see the potential imbalances that this may cause. At one point in time, you had to select few classes and builds that were considered quote unquote healers. There was an overall balance. Magic builds had the support role in PvP groups. They provided off healing with the restoration staff and could give certain buffs. While stamina builds, on the other hand, focus on high damage and self-sustaining healing. Where stamina builds more focus on a solo aspect of PvP and magic builds were better for group play. When the PTS was here a few weeks ago, I was talking about the healing changes then. But at that point, I was just raising the alarm saying this needs to be looked at before it goes to the live server as this can cause a massive healing meta in PvP and should be addressed. Seeing as I'm making this video now, nothing changed. But in an effort to reserve my judgment, I wanted to see this patch firsthand and see for myself how the gameplay actually feels. And honestly, this is only the tip of the iceberg. Not everyone is aware of these changes just yet, nor do they have some of the updated gear sets in PvP. So in all seriousness, this is actually the best time to play PvP in this update. Because once everyone adjusts and gets their builds all set up, it won't be a particularly enjoyable experience with nobody dying in PvP. So coming to the point of this video, what can Zenimax do about balancing this healing meta? I'm going to provide my perspective and point of view on some things I think that they can do. But before we get started, if you guys are interested, I created the ESO Academy Discord server. It is designed as a resource to help you either start or improve at PvP in ESO. I'll leave the link down in the description below. And also for the last announcement, to continue my month long giveaway for a $50 PSN, Steam or Xbox gift card, all you guys have to do is make sure you guys like this video, subscribe and comment Zilla Blade in the comment section and you are automatically entered to win. Without further ado, let's get right into it. First, I think we have to take a step back and look at the whole picture. Zenimax doesn't really balance things from a PvP perspective. Most of the time, we get a wide paintbrush of balance changes that don't directly target some of the biggest issues. It typically will either over nerf or over buff certain skills and sets. Seeing as this game is a PvE focus, the hybrid changes from my point of view and most in the community ruin the class identity at the highest level of gameplay. But for the casual player, the play the way you want is actually finally fulfilled. Also, another perspective to look at is different kinds of PvP content. Cyrodiil PvP and Battleground PvP are different and should be balanced and treated as such. And one more perspective is there are all kinds of skill levels in ESO PvP. In this video, I'm going to be mainly be talking about at the higher level, where people are super sweaty, they got best in like gear, and are fully optimized, because you have to start somewhere. You can't just balance things out for newer players or for veteran players. You kind of have to take everything into account. But it shouldn't be balanced around people that don't know the basics of PvP, just to make things easier for them. Because in due time, everyone can improve and get better at PvP. So the reason the healing meta is here is because there is two different dynamics. Damage and healing are coming from the same stats via weapon damage and spell damage. Now, before I go much further, I will say this is one of the reasons why I enjoy ESO so much is I don't have to be a dedicated healer in order to heal myself, nor do I have to be an absolute glass cannon in order to do a decent amount of damage. This is why this subject is so very hard to balance because this is what makes ESO different from other games. There isn't an exact role that you play. There's a kind of a mashup of all different kinds of roles that intermingle together into one build. The issue, however, is you get tankiness through a healing potential that also dips into the amount of damage you can deal. Since the change to CP 2.0 about a year ago, they added 1000 weapon and damage to everybody to compensate for the CP changes, which made it easier and more impactful to stack weapon and spell damage, ultimately, leading us to where we are today. This is why some classes like DK and Templar are so very problematic, because not only are they one of the tankiest with a class passives and skill design, but also they have some minor buffs that give them damage as well, which in turn makes their heals and damage much higher. Now that you guys kind of understand the problems we are facing, what are some ways we can actually fix this without outright nerfing specific classes? Because in my opinion, bringing up the floor is more important 
than lowering the overall ceiling. I think a way we could do this is to make max stats more viable because right now there's people that run around with less than 25k stamina on an actual stamina build and that is just absolutely mind blowing to me. Seeing as one point in time, anything below 35k, you were going crazy. Anything below 30k, it was an absolute sin. But now here we are. There is no point in building max stats anymore. I think increasing the overall value that they do give you would lead to more diverse gameplay than just everyone stacking damage. It would lead to classes like Sorcerer and Warden having more potential with some of their skills allowing for more maximum stats, while also not outright nerfing other classes. Certain skills, in my opinion, shouldn't be able to stack. So for example, you have skills like Radiant Regeneration. This skill when used when solo is perfectly balanced and fine. But when you have three or four or five different people using this, it can hit up a three different target. It can heal them for one to 2k per tick. It's just absolutely mind blowing to me. I think they should make this skill just like they did Vigor back in the day where you can't stack it on top of each other and can only have one on you at a time. This may be a bit of a controversial one, but I think we should remove cross healing again. PvP isn't a trial or a dungeon. It doesn't have the holy trinity of roles. It only really has, honestly, a DPS and a healer, as tanks are really just ignored for the most part in PvP. We all know that group size didn't actually affect the amount of lag in PvP because it's still the exact same way. Better yet, I actually think having less people in groups decreased the amount of population in PvP much more than actually the lag did. So I would be inclined to increase the group size back to 24 for Cyrodiil. However, making it to where you can't heal others outside of the group. This overall leads to a healthier balance of Timmy and Jimmy having to actually self-sustain their heals rather than having Sandra press a random breath of life across the courtyard to save them at 1% HP and her actually not even meaning to. It will lead to more organized gameplay where people don't just mindlessly run in like a pack of zombies in the keeps where it actually leads to more strategy and intense situations where people would be incentivized to group up and associate and coordinate. This would hamper down on some of the random healing that you cast for yourself, but it heals somebody else instead. Now, removing cross healing wouldn't affect BGs too much, but there's some other things that we could talk about as well. So let's talk about some buffs to defile. Now, I'm honestly on the fence on this one. I do see the potential in it. However, there is so very few ways to get it unless you outright build for it that it won't make that massive of a difference unless they buffed minor defile substantially which again i think is actually a bad idea because it can lead us back into a 55 percent healing debuff werewolf build we had back in the day the only reliable skills to proc defile in my opinion is blast bones on the necromancer lethal arrow from the bow cause of anguish on the werewolf that is really the main ones you have dark flare sure on the templar but that skill is too slow you have dragonite standard that is a great skill and it does proc defile but it is an ultimate and it costs quite a bit. And then you have Corrupting Pollen on the Warden, which is decent. However, Budding is easy, just a much better morph that heals for more, heals over time. And Corrupting Pollen is really not used much at all. I think honestly, buffing Defile is a band-aid fix to a gunshot and it doesn't really do much other than hurt specific classes that don't have the healing. It just makes other classes that do have more healing a little bit more manageable. I think the better route to go about this is to nerf Mending. So I think major mending right now is 16% and minor mending is 8%. Maybe nerf it again in half, maybe nerf it to 4 and 8%. Where it's a little bit more manageable, so it's it's definitely a noticeable difference in healing potential. But it's just not a deal breaker on certain specs and builds. Because you can run a resto staff, heavy resto. You got minor mending and major mending on a Templar. That's 24% healing increase. That's absolutely insane. Uh, and really leads to the reason why Templars and, and Dragonites are definitely much tankier than many of the other classes out there. Another avenue we can pursue is to look at Battle Spirit. Zenimax has talked about time to kill being an issue back when they changed to CP 2.0 when they had adjusted Battle Spirit then. I think overall increasing the healing in Battle Spirit isn't a good idea because all this leads to is a blanket easy nerf to everyone and not focusing on the bigger issues. I think what would be better to do on Battle Spirit is to nerf the mitigation or actually increase the damage that people take. Because what matters in a high healing meta, as you guys will notice, and what you guys are gonna see throughout this update is the only builds that are viable in 1vx situations are the ones that have massive burst potential. Dots are great and all, but they just take time. And with how much healing over time there is and the amount of heals you can stack, the only thing that can kill a high healing meta is a high burst meta. So you have like Curse, 
things with delayed bursts like sub assault, uh, crystal weapon. You know, there's things that you have to have that just you have that burst, and that's the only thing that can kill a high healing meta. So people can just sit back and just have so much mitigation without even having mitigation because of Battle Spirit. I think that Battle Spirit healing is fine. But battle Spirit mitigation should be reduced to make it to where people take more damage. So they can't just sit there and hold block and just not take damage. They have to actually actively reduce the damage they take by roll dodge and actually expend some resources rather than just sitting there holding block. Overall, this is some of my thoughts on how Xenomax could fix the healing meta that we are in. There isn't exactly one right way to go about any of this, and it can be very tricky to have to balance and not mess anything up in the process. But I'm honestly curious, what would you guys do to fix this healing meta? Tell me your guys' ideas down in the comment section below. But if you guys are struggling with fighting people who can heal through your damage constantly, then click this video here. This build video of my Stamina Nightblade will change your life. But that's it for me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.